Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Bart Shaywick from the National Institutes of Health. And I'm Shauna Sadler with ORCID. And today we're going to talk to you about Science CV and Biosketches and how we have integrated that with ORCID. So let's start with Science CV. What is it? Science CV is a system that allows investigators that are applying for federal grants to leverage data that they are already might have existing in, a, in an information system so that they can quickly fill out a biosketch. And a biosketch is like a, a mini CV profile that grant applications need um, to be successful. And so Science CV was set up because we knew that PIs had a lot of this information that was existing out there. And in order to facilitate and make this a quicker process, we said, let's use something that could pull this information in for them help to fill out the biosketch and format it for them according to the agency specifications. It also helps the granting agencies because they're able to input this data quickly and they can use it to track scientists throughout their career. So currently Science CV supports NIH as well as NSF biosketch formats. It supports the NSF current and pending support document and the Department of Education's IES Biosketch. We're integrated not just with ORCID, but also with NSF's Fastlane, ERA Commons, which NIH investigators will have an account with, and the PubMed and PMC literature archives. So ORCID's vision is a world where all who participate in research, scholarship, and innovation are uniquely identified and connected to their contributions and affiliations across time, disciplines, and borders. So in short, ORCID is part of an infrastructure to organize scholarly activities. We provide a unique ID number to people and a record to capture their research activities. So this ID then connects the researcher's scholarly activities like applying for an NIH or NSF grant with their ORCID record. Next slide. So we've talked about how Science CV is making things easier for investigators. And let's kind of look at how that happens. If you're not using Science CV and you'd like to apply for a grant, the NIH as well as the NSF both publish guides that help you put together a successful grant package. For NIH, if you wanted to fill out the bio, have a successful biosketch filled out, you have to look through their application guide, which is 310 pages. The NSF also specifies what their biosketch format is like in their 185 page application guide. Um, and within these guides, you will find all of the administrative details about how big the margins can be and how many lines per inch and what fonts you have to use. Um, so this is all information that you have to ensure your biosketch is structured and adhering to so that when it goes in as a grant application, as part of the grant application process, it has to meet all these specifications. But if you'd rather not dig through all of that, you can use Science CV. And I had also mentioned that you can connect existing data that you might have at NIH or NSF. And you do this by signing in through one or more of these accounts that you may have existing. So if you have an NIH ERA Commons account, you can sign into Science Feed directly using that. You can also sign in using the NSF login option. And if you have an ORCID account, you can sign in with the ORCID system. You are not limited to one of these. You can sign in with accounts that you have at each of these um, places simultaneously. So you can have an NIH account linked to your Science CV as well as your NSF, as well as ORCID, and you can pull information from all three of these sources. So to demonstrate, we have Sofia Maria Hernandez Garcia with her ORCID ID and record. So please imagine Sophia is a researcher at your organization. So Sophia has registered for an ORCID ID free of charge, and it took approximately 60 seconds to complete this process. Sophia then spent time populating her ORCID record with her research related information, such as her biography, her employer, education, funding, and list of her scholarly works. Next slide, please. So when Sophia logged into the NIH or NSF biosketch with her ORCID ID, the content in her ORCID record pre-populated the biosketch, reducing her administrative burden. 
So if your organization is a member of ORCID, your administrative staff can proactively pre-populate the ORCID records of your researchers to further support reducing researchers' administrative burden. It's important to know that researchers will always be able to edit the content in their ORCID record. Okay, next slide, please. So this really shows the power of leveraging data that you already have existing in different systems and how it can get pulled into Science CV. And as I mentioned, you can use as many of these as you would like. You can have information coming from ERA Commons as well as ORCID as, re as, as well as research.gov, which is the NSF solution for this. Whenever you're filling out the biosketch, if there's a point where having some of this information would help you and you've not linked an ORCID account to it yet, we'll often have a prompt. So you can quickly and easily click on this link and then we'll, we'll let you send you over to ORCID. You would authenticate with that sign in and then come back to Science TV and now you'll be able to have that connected information pulled into the biosketch. You can manage these connected accounts at any time. If you click on your username while you're signed into Science TV, we show you a, a personal settings page and it will display all of the different accounts that have currently been linked to your Science TV account. You can change them if you'd like, adding or removing them as you wish. When you first come to Science TV and you set it up, you get a bibliography that is connected to Science TV. And this bibliography will easily pull from PubMed. So if you are a life science researcher and you have lots of publications that are in PubMed, the bibliography feature that comes with Science TV easily pulls things in. Um, it's particularly helpful for NIH investigators that have NIH grants. They are required to use this bibliography as part of their grant reporting requirements. It populates the NIH RPPR. So if you're already using this bibliography to report on your grants, all that information can be put into Science TV and it's really easy for you to fill out the biosketch using that data. Now, what if you are not a life scientist and you're in the physical scientist, you're a physical scientist and you publish in that arena? Well, this is where ORCID could really come in and help you because ORCID will pull from other sources such as Crossref and Scopus. And they've made it really easy to pull in information from those types of resources into the ORCID record. Um, you can create manual citations in ORCID and this information can, can be pulled into Science TV as well. And like I said, you're not limited to one or the other. You can use both at the same time. Now, sometimes pulling this information into Science TV can cause a bit of an issue. Um, for instance, if you are someone that publishes in the physical sciences, you know that lots of times publications will have large author lists because of these big collaborations. And if you're trying to fill out a biosketch, say, for the National Science Foundation, you're only limited to two pages. And that could be a problem because one or two citations can easily put you over that two page limit. Now you have three pages, but this is something that I published in a collaboration. What am I supposed to do with this? So if you get that error message and you get these large author lists from a couple of your citations that have come over from ORCID, um, we've collaborated with scientists and talked to them about their needs and we've come up with a solution for that. So if you, are pulling citations into your biosketch and I'm showing the ORCID tab here. This is the point where you're adding citations to your biosketch. Um, we show a couple citations here that have a big list of author names and we'd like to trim that down. So for each of these citations, there's a hyperlink called Edit Authors. And if you click on that, you get a dialog box that has all the author names that are part of that citation, which you can then edit down uh, make it more manageable. In this example, we've trimmed it down to three different author names. You might want to make sure that your name is among those so that re the reviewer can see that. And we finished it off with an et al. So once you've done that, we will note on the ORCID feed that this particular citation has been edited. We've, that you've trimmed down the author list and you'll notice there is an edited tab now. If you click on that edited tab, you will see what the edited version looks like. And if you wanna change that, you can just delete it and go back and, and fix the citation uh, so that it's exactly the way that you want it to be. Now, when you add 
this edited citation into the biosketch. It's nice and short, and number two is the one we did. There's our three authors with et al. You can fit right into the page limits that you uh, needed to have, and your name is displayed, and everything looks great. When you're filling out the biosketch, whether it's an NIH biosketch or an NSF biosketch in SciCV, the interface looks very similar. Um, we lead you through the process. We show you which parts of information need to get filled out. As we had mentioned, in both of these examples, we've linked it to an ORCID ID, and we used ORCID information to pre-populate these biosketches. And this is, you can see the information that came over. Um, once that information comes over from ORCID and populates the biosketch, it's completely editable by you. So you can go in, you can change anything that you'd like to. If something came over, it was in all caps, and you wanted to fix that, you're free to do so. Once the information is imported into that biosketch, it's static in that it does not go back to ORCID. So you're not going to overwrite any existing information that you have there. It's it's put into Science TV, and then you're free to make it exactly how you need to. Once you've gotten your biosketch set up, you'll notice there's a, a link for PDF download at the top of each of those screens. And if you click on that, we will produce the PDF according to the specifications that NIH or NSF has. And even better is we keep all the structured data that made these PDFs and we attach it so that when you submit the PDF to either NIH or NSF, they're able to extract this information. We have a similar interface in Science CV for the NSF current and pending support. This is where you would note what grants support you. And it also has the same type of interface where you can enter the grants. You click the download PDF, it will produce the PDF that's according to the NSF specifications. And the structure data gets attached to that PDF as part of the application process. So SciCV has lots of features that try to make it really simple to get the information in so you quickly create a biosketch. Um, you can have as many biosketches as you'd like. So you can duplicate them, edit additional versions. Um, whenever you're ready to prepare a PDF for submission, you just click the PDF button and then we'll output it on demand. If you saw that there was a mistake and you wanted to fix it, you simply go back in, fix it in Science CV and click PDF again, you get a new output um, ready for your grant application. And finally, you can have a delegate manage this for you. So if you typically work with someone that prepares this, you can have them be a delegate on your Science CV account and come in and fill out these biosketches on your behalf for your grant applications. So ORCID and, and the NIH are working together right now to enable the NIH to write funding awards directly to the researcher's ORCID records. So this project is scheduled to go live in early 2021. And the NIH recently announced their final policy on data management and sharing, and ORCID will be able to support this by enabling researchers to add their research data management plans, or DMPs, to their ORCID record in the work section. So we both hope that we've shown you how Science TV can make things easier and how you can really take it to the next level when you connect um, data from ORCID or from NIH um, to make the process much easier and much nicer for you. We have additional information. We have videos uh, available on YouTube for how to integrate with ORCID and link those accounts. Uh, there's a general Science TV overview video on YouTube as well. And finally, Science TV also has a help desk that you can write to, as well as NSF for policy questions or how to use the login. And ORCID is happy to hear from you as well. So. Here's information if you'd like to learn more about ORCID and Science TV, and we hope to see you creating a biosketch soon. <laughs>